Some fantastic movies were released in the 2000s. These are the ones that no one saw. Awaken to triumph again in the face of yet another day. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated movies of the 2000s. For this list, we're looking at movies released between 2000 and 2009 that remain mysteriously overlooked or forgotten over the years and often suffered from a modest box office performance or general lack of acknowledgement, despite their quality. Uh -oh. Can people clearly see you're nuts? I don't know. Movies that are generally known by the public and hold good review or Rotten Tomato scores will not be included, such as The Prestige, American Psycho, etc. There is an idea of a Patrick Bateman, some kind of abstraction, but there is no real me. Number 10, Narc. I do something else? Yeah. Okay. Everyone loves a good, gritty cop drama, and Narc is just that, which begs the question, why isn't Narc more popular? The film stars Ray Liotta and Jason Patrick as two detectives who are trying to find the killer of an undercover police officer. What the f man? A month ago, an <sighs> undercover officer was murdered. The co-stars turn in electrifying performances, portraying the dirty, unethical cop figure with gusto and intensity. This is so f up. Yes, it is f up. This is so f up. While critics praised the movie, it only ever showed in fewer than 1,000 theaters and therefore did not reach a wide audience. It saw little recognition on video either and eventually faded into obscurity. You know by his real name? Yeah, he came on for a couple of weeks. He said his name was some Frederick something. Jimmy something. Fredericks, yeah, go. Yeah. Number nine, Brick. What'd she whisper to you? She called me a dirty word. Directed by Ryan Johnson and starring a younger, subtler Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Brick is one of the best thrillers of the decade that no one saw. You were with her then, you took the body. I saw you hiding. Yeah, I did. That's all you saw. What about before? Before what? Before I got there, did you see who killed her? You killed her! Playing out like a hard-boiled detective story set in high school, Brick borrows heavily from classic noir stories in the vein of Dashiell Hammett and is every bit as entertaining and complex. Last week at the payphone, Del Rio and Sarmentosa, she saw something she was scared of. Tug's car driving by, the pin-riding shotgun, but she wouldn't have seen the pin. It has a well-developed story with rich characters, and the high school setting provides a great modern twist on the old-school detective story. Today, it's a cult classic. Number 8. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind Oh, this is so good. I love this man. Directed by George Clooney and with an all-star cast that includes Drew Barrymore, Julia Roberts, and Clooney himself, it really is a wonder why this movie never caught on. I'm mad. The film follows the biographical story of Chuck Barris, a game show host who claimed to be an assassin working for the CIA. I work, <laughs> I work for the CIA. Do you understand? The actors are all fantastic, most notably the perpetually underrated Sam Rockwell as Barris. And the sets and cinematography capture the era perfectly. Come on. Come on. Mixing dark humor with intense drama, the movie finds a perfect balance and creates a unique, sadly overlooked experience. I kill a lot. I kill a lot of people. You understand? Number seven, I'm not there. Mama's in the factory, she ain't got no shoes. Daddy's in the alley, he's looking for food. Inspired by the life of timeless performer Bob Dylan. This movie uses non-traditional techniques to achieve its distinctive feel. He could do a pathos thing or sensation. For the times, they are changing. Many famous actors portray the different facets of Dylan, including Heath Ledger and Christian Bale, but it's Kate Blanchett who steals the show, receiving an Academy Award nomination for her stellar performance. But everybody wants you to be just like them. Let's say sing while you slave and just get bored. It's a weird and intimidating film, but it's all for the sake of artistic merit. And in that sense, the film is flawless. Dylan even praised the movie and its actors in a Rolling Stone article, calling them incredible. So at the very least, it wasn't overlooked by its subject. 
you got yesterday, today, and tomorrow all in the same room. Number six, Watchmen. This movie has superheroes and a dark, complex story. What more could you want? The story follows a team of retired superheroes in an alternate history at the peak of the Cold War. Like director Zack Snyder's previous movie 300, he adapted the graphic novel flawlessly and perfected its dark look for the screen. Your turn, Doctor. Tell me, what do you see? It's a visual masterpiece, featuring strong performances and an intriguing mystery. But it's somewhat underwhelmed at the box office due to its tiring length and controversially violent content. Do it! No! Number 5. Treasure Planet I'm Captain Amelia. Later, if you run ins with the Proton Armada, nasty business, but I won't bore you with my scars. This animated feature, as well as the overlooked Atlantis, The Lost Empire, played a hand in Disney's brief downfall during the early 2000s. Sometimes, the masses simply underappreciate great art in its time, though. Do say hello to Mr. Arrow. A futuristic take on Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, the film follows a young boy as he battles the elements of space to reach a prosperous planet. And you are? Jim. Oh, what a pleasure to meet you, Jimmy. It's Jim. Anyway. It's a visually wondrous film, and while critics liked its sense of humor, excitement, and pace, audiences didn't. The film only amassed $109 million on a $140 million budget, making it a financial bomb and ensuring its planned sequel was cancelled. Number 4. Moon Where am I? Another movie with another amazing performance by Sam Rockwell, Moon is a grossly underrated science fiction film that attempts to tackle heavy themes and questions while looking great in the process. I'm real lonely, you know. <laughs> I just want to shake your hand. Will you shake my hand? The movie follows an astronaut as he faces a crisis after being alone for three years on the moon. <laughs> it's a dark and lonely picture filled with elegant, spacious cinematography, but it's Rockwell's Oscar snubbed performance that pulls at our heartstrings. How did mommy die, sweetheart? It could be considered the next great sci-fi experience, if people would actually watch it. Are you okay with that? I'm here to keep you safe, Sam. I want to help you. Number three, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. That's me there. My name's Harry Lockhart, I'll be your narrator. An overlooked classic in the crime comedy genre, this movie centers on a thief who is posing as an actor in Hollywood that gets caught in the middle of a murder investigation. Detective lessons tomorrow, don't forget. Okay. Co-stars Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer share terrific chemistry, and the movie features one of Downey Jr.'s most overlooked roles, as he is truly hilarious. Doesn't that suck? I just hit you for no reason. I don't even know why. Watch it. The comedy is sharp and the action is gritty. With the movie blending so many genres together, it becomes a biting satire on classic hard-edged stories. These lessons suck. I quit. This is not being a detective. Corpses floating in lakes, people kissing. People, this is wrong. This is every shade of wrong. Number two, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Zissou here. This movie was written and directed by Wes Anderson and features all of his trademark quirkiness, eccentricity, and originality, which make for a fun, if awkward, time. What we'll kill this? Frankly, I better not. I don't usually try grass. It's filled with terrific performances by an all star cast. Most notably, Bill Murray as Steve, a man who sets out to find the shark that killed his friend. Now I'm going to go hunt down that shark, or whatever it is, and hopefully kill it. While Wes is becoming more popular today, this movie proved too strange for audiences, receiving mixed reviews and bombing with a box office performance of only $35 million. Supposedly, Cousteau and his cronies invented the idea of putting walkie-talkies into the helmet. But we made ours with a special rabbit ear on the top so we could pipe in some music. Before we take a look at our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. There are over 550 million firearms in worldwide circulation. That's one firearm for every 12 people on the planet. Do you remember the Zodiac? 
This is about Rick Marshall, isn't it? Listen, I got one idea. One way I might buy myself a little room to breathe. I need a big favor from you. Just survive. She's you. I don't want you to die. That's right. I shot the boy, too, and I enjoyed it. Number one, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. You want to investigate my courage? Do you? Find out! A unique title for a unique movie. It lets the audience know right away what they're getting into, which is a terrific story, leading up to the titular historic killing of Jesse James by Robert Ford. I've already robbed a railroad train. I'm sitting in a rocking chair chatting with none other than Jesse James. Starring Brad Pitt and Casey Affleck respectively, they become their characters through hypnotic performances. And the movie is completed by memorably beautiful and desolate cinematography. Used to be, could no one sneak up on Jesse James? Now you think otherwise. I ain't never seen you out your guns, neither. It deserves a spot in the pantheon of great westerns, but sadly, it bombed at the box office and failed to make an impression. Jesse James was nothing more than a public outlaw who made his reputation by stealing whatever he wanted, killing whoever got in his way. Do you agree with our list? I, I, I'm sorry that I'm so dysfunctional. What movie from the 2000s do you think is underrated? In your letter, you said you had no friends. Well, neither do I. For more great top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. God help us all.